Joining me next is Liz Storer, head of Advance Australia, Conservative political lobby group, and uh, Liberal Senator James Patterson. James, uh, for heaven's sake, you know, uh, <laughs> this is an extraordinary story. And coming on top of the news that we're having to spend $1.3 billion to protect ourselves from cyber attacks, particularly from the Chinese government. Mate, just that last bit. It sounds like we're at a bit of a cyber war, and not an actual bang-bang war, but a cyber war with China now, doesn't it? In a perfect world, Andrew, it'd be a great thing if the Australian government didn't have to spend an extra $1.3 billion to hire 500 new people to work at the Australian Signals Directorate and to skill up our workforce to make sure we've got the capacity to defend ourselves from cyber attacks. But uh, that would be a very naive view of the world. Uh, this is the new world that we're living in. These attacks are becoming increasingly frequent uh, and they pose a very serious threat to our sovereignty and our security. It is not just a threat to our government and our political system, but it's a threat to our academic institutions, it's a threat to our businesses and their intellectual property, uh, it's a threat to our way of life. And so uh, I very much welcome the government's renewed investment, additional investment in this area, because it's going to be uh, sorely drawn upon, I suspect, in the years ahead. Liz, uh, uh, just because it's uh, called cyber attack, I'm not sure that you can uh, disqualify it as an act of war against the country for China to launch something potentially with such terrible consequences for our economy, for our, for our secrets, for national security. Uh, it's an act of war, isn't it? I would say so. We are under attack. And although our government has very diplomatically, James, uh, not said this is China, we all know who's the culprit here. Uh, mm. and, and coming just off the back of the atrocious handling of the virus with Beijing keeping secrets, etc., and so on, these guys seem to be gagging for a fight, whether it's this cyber warfare with Australia, whether it's a, a budding Cold War with the US, whether it's the skirmish on the Indian border, whether it's Taiwan, whether it's Hong Kong. China's diplomatic mask has slipped. We seem to be seeing the iron fist just going for it these days. And it's very, very interesting. You've got to wonder, how is this going to end? What's their end game here? Well, when you list all those things, Liz, I've got to say, it doesn't seem to be bungling on their part. It seems to be a deliberate strategy to uh, show uh, the, 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 you know, the mailed fist beneath the velvet glove. Not so velvet. Uh, James, uh, Liz mentioned uh, their bungling of uh, or mishandling of the coronavirus. What about Victoria's, your home state, reimposing restrictions on 36 suburbs? This is devastating. Uh, Victoria's essentially back to square one with, uh, with this whole thing. What questions need to be asked in this inquiry the government has now promised? Well, it's important, Andrew, to make clear that we're not quite back at square one. Yes, it's a very disappointing uh, backward step, but what the Andrews government has done is what we would advocate they do in these circumstances, which is have localised lockdowns in hotspots, not a broad lockdown across the whole state of Victoria, which would be a real step backwards, and that would be back to mm -hmm. square one. But you're right, there are questions to be asked. Uh, very clearly, uh, straight up off the bat, is the handling of quarantine hotels. Uh, all other states and territories have been able to manage quarantine hotels without having significant community transmission. Evidently, the Andrews government has not been able to manage that here in Victoria, and that is very disappointing, and it has come at a very significant cost for all Victorians who are now banned from going to Queensland and will have many of their businesses shut down as a result of this failure. Uh, but also, Andrew, I would say uh, the Andrews government probably should have put its hand up and said it was having trouble, it was having difficulty, and it needed help earlier than it did, uh, and we should be putting in the federal resources that we're now making available earlier if they'd made that request. Liz, I want to pick a, a, a bone there with, uh, with James where he says we're not back to square one because the bans aren't all over the state. We are back to square one in the sense that it's reacting to uh, a wave of infections, uh, you know, 75 yesterday, that last time we had infections anywhere near that, it did respond with statewide bans. Now, yes, all right, they're more targeted, which is what I wanted at the... what sensible people wanted at the very start. We're back to square one in terms of infections, but the strategy has changed. And that, to me, suggests that governments are starting to recognise they went in too hard, too broad brush at the first. Have we learnt that lesson? 
Well, have we learned that lesson indeed? Uh, also, the question needs to be asked, do lockdowns work? This Correct. happened right under... We, we saw much harsher lockdown in Victoria than any other state. And here we've got outbreak after outbreak. It continues to be the worst in the country. But what I don't understand, Bolt, and is so frustrating to see, is that... And, and mainstream Australians are exhausted by this, is that the hysteria around this continues, even though we know so much more than we did at the beginning. Yes, these are high case numbers, like you say, we haven't kind of seen these numbers since the very beginning, but this is going to be life as we know it for the foreseeable future. We can't keep locking down every time there's a spike. It's just not going to work. We don't have a vaccine. There's not really one on the horizon at the moment. Yes, we've all got to be smart, but lockdown after lockdown is just not, especially in Victoria. I was talking to a mate there just yesterday and he was almost in tears. He'd gone to his usual coffee oh, place. Yeah. And the young guy out the front, 28 years of age, had poured every dollar into this place, as so many small businesses do, and he was just standing on the footpath, fighting tears as his cafe was just being dismembered from the inside. This is the new plague. This is what needs our media attention. This thing turns out we've seen far worse plagues in, in terms of fatality rate. What we've never done before is shut down massive swathes of our economy. Right. And that is the tragedy that we're facing now. I think that's right. I think even now it's a, perhaps a too broad brush and I think it'll be unenforceable. I can't see how this is going to be maintained. Just 36 suburbs, specific suburbs, locked off from the rest. I don't know how that's going to work. Liz Thorough, James Patterson, thank you both so much for your time. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Bolt. After the break, the ABC gets a girl to go beg the government for its money. It's absolutely shameless. And proof. The ABC's leftists do look an awful lot alike. It's how strange. Have a look. Mining's a key.